Meredith Barakovitz alongside Brian Cashman. Brian, baseball is coming back in 2020. Was there a point in time when you thought you would never hear those words? Of course. I mean, I, you follow uh, how the negotiations were going and as well as the pandemic, and there's a lot of question marks along the way. And, and uh, unless you were in the negotiating room, you had no idea if there was really something that was going to play out or not. What are some of the protocols that are in place right now to try to keep people as safe as possible? Wow, there's a ton of them. Uh, more than we have probably to, to talk through on this uh, on this Zoom call. Um, you know, Major League Baseball has in, implemented a hundred and some team page protocol agreement where you know clearly social distancing and testing and and intake testing and and uh, you know is is vitally important. And you know, you're transforming a large facility in our case, Yankee Stadium now into a uh, a much larger clubhouse, a much larger training room, and utilizing the entire facility to, to ensure the safety of all personnel, players, staff members, and support personnel. And um, so it's it's based. It's definitely going to be a, a challenge for a lot of people. Doug Bihar, who runs our facility, has been doing a yeoman's job of trying to make sure this all works. As you know, we tried to make uh, Tampa our home for spring training 2.0 until the COVID outbreak hit in Florida. So we had to transition up to the Yankee Stadium last second. So once he got the two facilities in Florida ready, now he's he got that practice in. So he's doing New York as we speak. Brian, how will it work? What are some of the logistical challenges involved in making this work for the players? Well, I mean, it's the biggest thing is, is to, to try to people, you know, make sure that you're in a position to, to stay COVID free or as COVID free as you possibly can in a, in a pandemic environment, um, you know, because you're going to have, people that will test positive uh, regardless. Um, and then, you know, being in a position to contain and protect uh, and take, you know, uh, the proper medical measures, um, you know, to support the athlete or the, or the coach or the staff member that actually, you know, does uh, contract COVID, you know, um, you know, making sure that they're in a position that, you know, they get isolated and the, and the medical care necessary clearly, you know, thankfully, in, in, in almost all cases that we've experienced thus far, the symptoms have been really mild, um, uh, you know, and so we've been able to thankfully avoid something severe that you've seen in the public arena uh, throughout the world at times, and uh, we're very thankful for that, but, uh, you know, but yeah, our, our medical crew, uh, whether it's Mike Shuckert uh, and, and Tim Lentek, uh, along with, you know, Dr. Lee uh, from New York Presbyterian, you know, they, they're really doing an amazing job of trying to make sure that uh, the facility is, is clean, ready to go, and the safety standards are in place uh, that, that will protect all. Brian, what will the schedule be moving forward? They're coming in, understanding, on Wednesday to get tested. What will you do thereafter? Well, we essentially we started our intake testing protocols, and so, uh, you know, I got mine uh, and much of our staff members on Saturday. Uh, and then they have continued yesterday, um, which was Monday at Yankee Stadium, and they'll continue uh, throughout the rest remainder of the week because trying to get people um, from all over the world back to New York um, and then get through the intake testing procedures that Major League Baseball has set up, um, you know, where there's a saliva test and, a, and an antibody test, for instance, and then they send all those results out to Utah and then the, the lab, which is, I'm sure, slammed. Uh, currently, right now, as they process uh, all these teams uh, you know, consistently coming FedEx packages of, of, uh, of samples, you know, um, it takes about 48 hours minimum, if not longer. Uh, and then once you're clear, you're in. So thankfully, I can report I'm clear. Um, and uh, and so far, so good on, on our testing. But we, uh, we still have, a, you know, the player population, most of which have to have to get their clearances. A lot of them have taken their tests, but uh, we're still waiting for the end results on those. Has anybody in New, York, in New York so far that you know of in the organization tested positive? We have COVID positive tests, uh, you know, uh, since, you know, the pandemic hit, obviously, whether it's through our minor league uh, player pool, uh, our major league player pool, our staff uh, player pool on either ends, uh, front office. So uh, we've experienced, uh, like, I think every uh, walk of life, you know, positive uh, COVID tests, but thankfully, um, from that, we really only had, and it was back in spring training, we really only had one employee, for instance, uh, it was one employee that really was struggling for a good 10 days uh, with it, and and, uh, and 
needed some hospitalization. That was back in March. Um, but uh, everybody else that has uh, tested positive for COVID, uh, their symptoms are extremely mild or, or really no symptoms at all and more of a surprise that they actually tested positive. Uh, and, uh, and sometimes you're testing because you get in contact with others who've had COVID. And uh, to some some's dismay that the test results have come back, which is, wow, you, you have COVID or you, you've been exposed to COVID. So, um, but yeah, we've, we've experienced uh, positive COVID testing throughout the uh, organization. When do you expect the workouts to begin? Well, I think on a limited basis, we could have something as early as Thursday, you know, people, you know, who have passed and get some, some limited workouts in at the facilities as we're continuing to try to get up and running. But either the official day will be Friday or Saturday. We're still letting stadium ops uh, do their uh, walkthrough and, and finish off the, the sterilization of the stadium and all in all avenues. So certain certain parts of the park will be more ready than others. But I think come Saturday at the latest and maybe Friday at the earliest it would be the first official. But again, the question mark is how many of our personnel will have gotten the test results back to have full intake uh, um, uh, and those results to allow us to have a you know as close to the full squad as we possibly can. I imagine the workouts are going to be a little bit different than they were in the regular spring training. So, Brian, what will be different about what you guys are able to do when everyone is, in fact, clear? Well, you know, it, because we had to pivot, you know, last second from uh, our player development facility at Himes and the Major League facility at GMS Field, um, those were going to be our two locations initially. But then when the outbreak uh, raged, raged the way it did down in Florida, um, we pivoted last second, so we're going to utilize Yankee Stadium for the entire uh, unit to start out because Scranton, which will be our alternative uh, facility, will not be ready for a good seven to ten days uh, or more. So we'll, we'll utilize the visiting clubhouse, the auxil auxiliary clubhouse, and the home clubhouse. We'll utilize the concourses uh, and the seating and the dugouts, um, you know, in, in every aspect we possibly can to, to – you know, allow our players to, to have a free, safe social distancing zone. Um, so we're going to maximize the, the footprint of, of uh, Yankee Stadium uh, to the benefit of our players' health as we move forward and manage this, uh, you know, large contingent that is ex going to experience spring training 2.0. Guys have been working out, but it's not the same as being on the field in competitive play. What's your level of concern about additional injuries because guys were ramped up, stopped, and are now starting again in a quick fashion? Well, it's, of course, it's going to be a concern. I mean, obviously, a smaller I – mean, there's a reason we've had a six-week or more spring training forever, and, and uh, you know, there isn't a custom level of ramping players up. And, and, um, and so players have – in most cases, I think, done as good a job as they possibly can in their isolated environments to, to try to stay as close to physically ready as they possibly can. But you can't substitute that for game reps. And so I think uh, Aaron Boone and our, our staff are, are going to try to, you know, get as close as they possibly can to, to, to simulate some game actions over the course of this three-week period. And, and that's going to, you know, put a stress on, on all aspects of the body. It's uh, obviously designed to get them ready but it also exposed those who might not be ready. And, and uh, you know, we're certainly going to try to do everything in our power to avoid the injuries that will come, but they will be coming no matter what for all franchises uh, in a smaller work we, uh, zone of three weeks and, and getting ready for a 60 game sprint schedule over, I think it's like 66 days. And so um, it's, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, our medical team uh, and training staff obviously are, uh, you know, looking forward to meeting that challenge to the best of their ability, but uh but it's definitely – last time we did this was, you know, obviously in the strike short the season, and there was some high level of injuries getting out of the gate and in season because of it. Do you anticipate intra-squad games and competition against other teams in the area prior to the first game of the season, or will it simply be your guys playing against each other? I think definitely inter-squad games, uh, that's an automatic without a doubt. And then uh, from a baseball operations standpoint, we are open to doing – uh, you know, taking advantage of the three exhibition games that we have uh, the ability to play if we can find a partner. And I have engaged, you know, the Northeastern GMs about those possibilities. But at the same time, I don't have clearance yet from ownership and our, uh, our stadium ops. I think it's a great opportunity for a walkthrough for our stadium ops if we can play some exhibition games. So I think there's check uh, boxes that can be checked in a positive way for preparing, you know, for a real, you know, uh, 
you know, uh, competition, you know, when the season starts. And so our stadium ops would get ready and go through a walkthrough that way. And I definitely think it's from a baseball standpoint, any games we can play against an opponent prior to the uh, lights, camera, action starts, it would benefit us from a baseball standpoint because inner squads can only take you so, so far, but the actual opponent, you know, that's not yourself, um, you know, that's where you're really going to, you know, get some growth, I think, and a benefit from it. And so obviously when our season starts, I want to hit the ground running and be, 100% certain that we are as ready as we can be. Not that anybody's going to be as ready as they can be, but but I think uh, those exhibitions would be important to do so. But we're still talking through that matter. The news trickled out the other day that Aaron Judge had been swinging a little bit. Can you update us on his status? Where is he at right now? Is he ready to play in games? Um, well, I think the next uh, coming weeks will determine that. He, uh, where he's at physically is he feels good. Um, you know, he's done – you know, some throwing program and he's done, you know, he's swinging the bat against the machine, for instance, and, you know, which is as close to, to live game actions as you, as you can get without an arm being cocked against you. And so I think, uh, you know, this next three week period, you'll see him uh, right away being dropped in the deep end of the pool and facing live pitching and, and seeing where that takes us. Uh, so there's a great deal of optimism that uh, as long as there's no setbacks that, he showed at this early point, you know, prior to spring training 2.0 starting it, it appears that, you know, we can dream that he, his words will ring true when he said that he would be ready for opening day, despite this injury. And because of COVID and the delay of our season, that, that, uh, that looks like it is a real possibility and hopefully it can be. We have John Carlos Stanton, Aaron Hicks, James Paxton said he had been throwing some bullpens. Do you expect those guys to be ready to go at the start of this new season? Uh, again, without setbacks, I think uh, there's a lot of optimism. Uh, Paxton you know, appears to be fully healthy in, in his workload and, and rehabbing from his off-season surgery that happened late. And uh, and uh, and in terms of Aaron Hicks, uh, his reconstruction of his Tommy John, I don't think as much of an issue as, as evaluating over the coming three weeks where he's at in the physical condition standpoint. Because, again, these game reps, same with uh, Gene Carlos Stanton, these game reps, he, Stanton, I believe, is, is healthy. Uh, uh, and, you know, probably definitely DH uh, consideration, you know, as long as the next three weeks go well. But in terms of Hicks, in terms of Stanton, in terms of Judge, in terms of all these uh, players, I think that uh, the bigger area of concern or issue would be where are they at in their physical uh, conditioning side. Uh, and, you know, with the stop and start type uh, sport, sporting activity baseball promotes, on the defensive end, on the on the offensive end, you know, um, you know, where all of a sudden you got to kick it in the gear and uh, from a stagnant position and how your body reacts to that on a day in and day out basis, uh, I think that's going to really tell us a lot. So uh, I think there's optimism that all those players uh, and all of our players, uh, for the most part, uh, should be, you know, knocking on that door as being game ready by. Uh, by the bell ringing, but I think the three-week period that we have, we'll be taking advantage of evaluating if that's truly the case. Brian, this is going to be a season like we have never seen before. Knowing that it's more of a sprint as opposed to a marathon, how does that change your job right now? I mean, I, the biggest thing was how we constructed the, the current, you know, initial 60-man roster. Uh, we didn't approach, you know, we're in this thing to win it. Uh, we didn't approach it from a development standpoint for prospects other than we do have prospects on our 40 man roster that, you know, uh, you know, still have some growth side and development side as they, they come up through the minor league system. Uh, but we didn't add any non roster high end prospects that were either coming right out of the draft or, or, uh, you know, recent signs. There was a lot of speculation players like a Jason Dominguez or things of that nature. We didn't do any of that because ultimately the, the eyes on the prize, which is we have a 60 game sprint in a COVID environment uh, to try to qualify for the playoffs and take a shot at, at a 2020 world championship title. And, and uh, we felt it was best served by, by, you know, hoarding as many players that are in a position to contribute at the major league level now. And, uh, and because of the anticipation of injuries, the anticipation of, of, you know, being exposed to COVID from time to time and that we're going to have to adjust on the run that this roster would be best set for, um, you know, people that can, can, hopefully hit that win column uh, as much as we possibly can rather than, you know, uh, try to develop talent that, uh, that we're harnessing for the future. So that's how, that's basically how uh, I think from the front office standpoint, we, we've approached this thing. You're ready to go. 
I mean, we're trying to be. Uh, we're trying to think of everything uh, that we possibly can, and we're trying to stay connected to uh, to the other clubs uh, to, to, to kind of cross-check what they're doing versus what we're doing and, and keeping our ears to the ground, whether it's scout on scout, front office, you know, GM to GM or manager or coaches to manager and coaches on the in the other environments to find out to make sure that there isn't any – Stone, we haven't unturned, and, and uh, it's, if somebody's got a better idea or a good idea or a good practice that we haven't utilized to this stage, that we can quickly adopt it too. So we're going to be as ready as we possibly can, and we're looking forward to, to testing the waters. Brian, thank you so much for the time. I look forward to seeing you at the ballpark, even if it is from six-plus feet away. Same here.